Hey guys, it's Miss Finian here for your flip video number two on reconstruction. If you look at your C notes um, from last time, we covered um, two of these right here, uh, essential questions, and we're still covering those. Um, and so let's um, go on to our learning targets. So we're still explaining the changing status of African Americans in America from 1876 to the early 1900s. So on your C notes, you want to put learning target 1.5, and we are going to cover learning target 1.5. Four, explain the impact of the Hayes-Tilden presidential election and how it ended Reconstruction. Okay, so to start off, we want to review just a tad bit. Um, these are, can you guess? Let's read them and see if you can guess what these are. Um, it shall be unlawful for a Negro and white person to play together or in company with each other in any games of cards or dice, dominoes or checkers. Okay, what kind of law would this be? Marriages are void when one person is a white person and the other is possessed of one-eighth of or more Negro, Japanese, or Chinese blood. Separate free schools shall be established for the education of children of African descent, and it shall be unlawful for any colored child to attend any white school or any white child to attend a colored school. All railroads carrying passengers in the state other than street railroads shall provide equal but separate accommodations. So I want you to think about what would these be? What have we been talking about um, that would um, encompass these? If you're thinking Jim Crow laws, then you are correct. One thing I want to point out that people, um, students have a lot of questions about is um, the use of the word Negro. So back all the way before the 19th century, before the 1960s and before, Negro was the proper term for African American. Um, black was actually an offensive term. So when the 19 after the 1960s, um, it be, it became opposite, and Negro became more of a offensive term. So anything that you see before the 60s, will you any primary sources will use the word Negro. Um, and so that's just some information for you, so you understand what you're reading when uh, you look at these primary sources. Okay, so um, we also discussed Plessy vs. Ferguson, um, which kind of leads right into Jim Crow, uh, separate but not equal. Um, so the whole point of Plessy vs. Ferguson was that schools could be separate, but they had to be equal. And so I love this uh, political cartoon because it shows that it's clearly not equal. Um, this is another uh, example of Jim Crow law where the restrooms uh, were separated, and this is going to occur all the way up to the 1960s. Now here's an actual picture of what they call Jim Crow, um, Jump Jim Crow, and he um, this is actually a white guy, and he dressed up in blackface, and he would act like a fool, and it would make African Americans look silly, and that's where they got Jim Crow laws from. Basically, like this is how we're going to keep uh, the African American race down because look how silly they are. That is basically what um, uh, they used to keep African Americans down. This is the symbol that they used. Um, so that's why when you see celebrities and they wear blackface today, it's very offensive. Um, I think Julianne Huff, if you know her, she's like a country singer. Last year she wore blackface and she got shamed. You don't do that kind of thing because it's disrespectful. And that's kind of where this um, started. Okay, so that's just a little review. So to move on, uh, you're on learning target about the Hayes and Tilden election. So before we get into that, you need to understand how does the electoral college work. So when you vote for a president, um, there is popular vote and there's the electoral college. So we want to discuss how it works. Each state is entitled to as many electoral votes as the sum of its representation. So however many U.S. House of Representatives and how many uh, U.S. House of Senate. Um, that's how many votes you would get. So, for example, Ohio has 18 House of Representative members in Washington, plus every state has two senators, therefore they have 20 electoral votes. Okay? Reread, think about it, 18 House members plus two senators equals 20 electoral votes. So you get the equal amount of electoral votes for how many people you have in Congress. Okay? So there's 435 House members and 100 senators three electors from the District of Columbia, so that means in total in the United States there's 538 electoral votes that can be had, okay? So each state determines the manner of their selection. Um, so basically all but two states use a winner-take-all system. So this means that if you go vote for president, for, for example, um, and the popular vote basically goes to, let's say, we'll say that it was between Obama and Romney in the last election. If your state voted for Romney, then your your um, state would give all the electoral votes to Romney, okay? 
Or, on the other hand, if it was Obama, then your state would give all of them to Obama. Okay? So everyone else. So the only two states use winner take all. So everyone else, if candidate A gets the most votes in a state, candidate A gets all the delegates. Okay? Therefore, an Ohioan, someone who's from Ohio, who votes for Obama is really voting for an electoral pledge to cast the state's electoral votes. So when I go vote, say um, in 2008 I voted, or 2012 I voted for Obama. When I voted for Obama, I was placing a vote for an elector to vote. I was placing a vote so that Obama could win the popular vote in Tennessee and that our electoral votes would go toward him. It's very confusing. If you didn't understand it, type in Electoral College on YouTube and there's a two-minute video. I'll also post it on Edvoto for you. So in 2000, which is some of you were little tiny babies, Bush won all of Florida's 25 electoral votes because of the final official vote tally showed him ahead of Gore. He was only ahead of Gore by 600 votes, but he won all of Florida's 25 electoral votes, which pushed him over to win. So that being said, in 1876, this is the end of Reconstruction. Okay, we've been trying to put the country back together, um, and we know that segregation is coming back around. You have Rutherford B. Hayes and Samuel Tilden. Okay, so you have these two different parties. You have the Republican Party and you have the, uh, the Democratic Party, um, and they're both running. These are uh, president and vice president. And P.S., this guy's nickname is Rutherford B. Hayes, and we'll talk about that later. So basically, what we're talking about here is like, this, um, then that's a political cartoon um, that basically says, like, what is the regional balance here in the north and in the south? What does that look like? Um, and we'll, we're going to cover that one in class a little bit more. Um, so this is what, in 1876, the presidential election looked like. So um, the, red, the blue states are Republican and the red states are Democratic. So you can see that, like, all of these, it's split pretty equally. And these are all the territories, okay? So... There's no voting in the territories at that point. So if you look, the electoral vote is 185 to 184, okay? Um, and then the popular vote is almost dead on, okay? Now, a president can win the popular vote but lose the electoral vote, okay? And that is what happened with um, in 2000. So what you have here is like a dead on split. So what did they do? Here's the issue. If you have the Republican, which is Hayes, right, he, he um, will be more still, he will be wanting to keep Reconstruction going. If you get a Democrat from the South, then they're not going to want Reconstruction to stay because the South has already kind of been uh, through a lot and they want to be left alone. They don't, they're still angry at the Union, they're still upset, okay. So what happens is that Tilden, if you go back and look, he wins the popular vote, okay, right here. And then you have um, Hayes won the electoral vote, okay? So this is what we call the Compromise of 1877. Write that down in your notes, highlight it, and underline it, okay? Hayes gets 20 electoral votes that were unresolved, okay? So Republicans end up pulling their troops out of the South. So what happens is the compromise, that the South said, okay, we will let Rutherford B. Hayes, the Republican, be president as long as you take all your military out of the South, okay? What's the problem with that, okay? Here's a uh, political cartoon. Boo-hoo, Ruthie Hayes got my presidency and he won't give it to me. Okay, so this compromise is really important because, and you need to write this down, it ends Reconstruction because when, um, even though Hayes wins and he's for Reconstruction, part of the deal of him winning and taking over was that there would no longer be military in the South. There would no longer be a Northern influence in the South. Therefore, the South could do whatever they want. This leaves the South on their own, which is what leads to Jim Crow laws, separate but equal, Plessy vs. Ferguson, all of these things um, that ha you have this cycle from African Americans who all of a sudden, 1965, they're free. But by 1877, when uh, the North pulls out, they have lost rights. They're back as sharecroppers, which is basically slavery. Um, and like I said, they've just lost their rights. They can't vote. There's literacy tests, poll taxes, which we talked about in the last one. So the status of African American changes because they went from freedom and lots of rights to no rights by the turn of the century. Okay. And so this is something that we're going to definitely follow because this is going to change. Um, this is not going to change up until the 1960s. Okay. So, um, 
I think we already did all of these and let's check it out. Okay. Um, during Reconstruction, ex-slaves were promised 40 acres of land and a mule, except that didn't happen. The government never came through. Okay. And in the 60s, when we find, civil rights finally comes around and there's all these rights going on, people were overheard saying, that's for my 40 acres and a mule, as they stole, as if they stole something from a store. Um, so that's just a little tidbit of information for you. So what I want you to do, um, remember on these C notes, you don't have to do your left side or summary. You're going to do those at the beginning of class. Just make sure you go back through and highlight what's important, circle keywords. Please ask questions. I expect you to come in with questions. Like I covered sharecropping last time, and you may not have understood that. So make sure you ask that in class. Uh, the only way that you're going to learn things is by asking questions. Um, I hope you guys have a good night and a good weekend, and I will see you next class. Bye.